Hi everyone, this is Steven. Welcome in this video. For the last few years, as you all know, I've been focusing on helping out companies to create a fantastic customer experience. And in this video, I just made a summary of what I think are 12 guidelines that every company should take into account when they build their own vision about customer experience. So I hope this is gonna be a good source of inspiration for all of you. First of all, try to work with small projects. I've been to too many organizations that come with this huge idea about customer experience and then it's like a monster they create and during the execution it doesn't work. What works really well is make a list of many, many small improvements that you can do for your customers. And the impact of 100 small items that you do to improve the service for your customers is much higher than the impact of this one huge project. Intelligence augmented. I, I think it's important to figure out a way how you can improve the human service thanks to technology. Let me give you this example. Um, I go often to hotels when I give keynotes in an in, uh, international markets. And sometimes you go to the same hotel over and over again. And then you know how it goes, right? You go to the hotel, you check in, and then there's this fr friendly human waiting there for you. And then the first question is, ah, oh, Mr. Van Bellingham, is this your first time here? And then I'm like, no, no, this is my 20th time here. Always an embarrassing moment. Can you blame the employee? No. Can you blame the organization? Yes. You cannot expect that the employee recognizes everyone, but you can expect that a hotel chain has a system that when you type in a name, that you can see the history of that, uh, of that client. That is intelligence augmented. Just use simple technologies to make sure that your humans say the right thing at the right moment. Very often I see a disconnect between the, the vision and the enthusiasm from the top management about customer experience and the rest of the organization. It's really important that you figure out a way how you can translate the high level strategy to the life and the context of every simple employee. In fact, what the goal should be is that every employee knows what their contribution will be to this customer relationship uh, strategy. Uh, figure out a way how to do that. And you know, the trick is, or the thing is, there's no shortcut to do that. There's no efficient way to do that. I think the secret of success is literally convincing your employees one by one. This one is really cool. Celebrate success when you have an improvement. I, I, many companies are like never happy with what they do for their customers and that is so sad. They're like waiting until they have reached perfection before they celebrate and they're always like, yeah, it's not good enough and we have to improve this and that. It's fine to have a perspective on how to improve. It's fine to have a view on your journey. But I think it's so important for the energy of the team to celebrate the small successes that you have in improving your customer experience. You will see that this you know, gives a boost of energy to everyone. And the cool thing is that when you have 10 celebrations, then you can, you can look back and you say, look at what we've done. And people will also have the feeling that things are moving if you celebrate the success. So I think this is really important. Have you seen some of those soccer games in empty stadiums? It's extremely sad. And you also see in the statistics that many teams are suffering from that. It's not the same kind of energy. And the reason is because soccer players are used to getting direct feedback from their customers, the fans, and they hear the oohs and the ahs directly from the audience. And it gives them an energy boost. It gives them an urgency to do better. When they score, they have this huge celebration. Well, I think we need the same thing in every organization. If you work in a company, where many employees don't get the direct feedback from customers, that's a missed opportunity. I believe that every employee should have a way to feel the oohs and the ahs from the customers directly. And it will create urgency, it will create a higher level of commitment towards the customer. So make sure that every single one gets that direct feedback from the customer. Playing the friction hunter game. This is one of the things that I believe in so much. I've done this so many times with clients. It's such a cool game. You, you turn every employee into a friction hunter and you invite your team to look for frictions in the customer journey. Don't look for big things, look for details, look for the details. Make a list of frictions and look for things that are easy to solve. And then you put a name next to it. And then you give that person four weeks to solve the friction and you bring the team back together and you solve them. And then you solve it 
again and you do that game again and again and again and after a while you will have a culture where people are really sensitive for the details in the customer journey and that will increase the overall quality towards your customers. Many of you know that I'm a huge Disney fan so there has to be some Disney magic into this uh, video as well. And one of my favorite videos is Inside Out from Disney, where you can see how the mind of the customer works. Not really the mind of the customer, but the mind of the human, right? And if you watch the film, you will see that we have five emotions and four of them are negative. We only have one positive one, it's joy. And then you have sadness, anger, disgust, and fear. So 80% of the emotions in our mind are negative. That's why we complain so much. Huh? We, can't handle, we can't help that. Or that's why our customers complain so much. They can't help that. My invitation to you guys is if you have a meeting tomorrow about your customers and you have the feeling that in the meeting room the negative emotions are taking over, I invite you to stand up and say, what would joy do? And let joy take the decisions in your company. Let positive emotions take the decisions and you will see that that will create a boost of happy customers. Okay, if something goes wrong in the relationship in a transaction between you and your customer, Many organizations have the tendency to look for the person who made the mistake. And they ask the question, who made the mistake? The customer or us? Don't do that. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Just focus on one thing. Fix the problem instantly. Because I tell you, if you do not fix the problem instantly and you look for the person who did it and you find out that the customer made a mistake and you tell the customer that, I guarantee you that the customer will say, yeah, hey, but I'm a good customer for this one mistake. Can't you still help me? And you will have a negative discussion. And in the end, you will still solve it, but without customer happiness. Skip the annoying part, just fix it. And afterwards, you can look for ways how to improve the processes. Fix the problem. This one is difficult for many organizations huh? because we have the ROI thing that is always being popped up in many discussions. And it's important to have an ROI on the investments that you make as an organization. But I strongly believe in the fact that you need to figure out a customer expectations approach where you do good for the customer, but where you don't have any short-term expectations. And don't get me wrong, do whatever you can to get short-term results as soon as possible, but don't have short-term expectations. If you do a random act of kindness, don't expect customers to buy more because of that. If you do something nice, if, if you've done a great campaign, if you send them a gift, don't expect them to do something back instantly. Believe that that builds a long-term relationship. Keep on doing that without looking for a short-term impact. It's like going to the gym. Huh? When you go to the gym for four weeks, what is the result in the mirror? Nothing. If you go for eight weeks, what's the result? Nothing. So the conclusion is it doesn't work. Right? So a lot of people stop going to the gym after two months because it has zero impact. It's a waste of time. Whereas we all know that if you want to have an impact of going to the gym, you need to make that investment for a couple of years. It's the same with customer experience. You don't see the difference after two months, so it doesn't work, right? No, wrong. You see the impact after a long investment. So do a lot of things to improve your relationship without short-term expectations. This is one of the things that I've been using so much it's very simple. If you want to be successful, make sure you are fast, easy, and fun. And a lot of organizations have been working on fast and easy, but don't forget the fun fact. Make sure that it's also fun to work with your organization. People like to be entertained. People like fun stuff. Invest in that. You know, in the last 10 years, when it's about customer experience, we have been focusing a lot on transactional perfection, digital convenience. Um, in my opinion, digital convenience has become a commodity. It's what people expect today. The challenge is now to create emotional convenience. Understand the human behind the customer. Understand the movie that people have in their head about their future, about the things they hope will happen, things they hope will not happen, about the dreams and fears they have about their ambitions. And play an active role in that as an organization to make sure you help them emotionally to create more value in their life as a human. It's about the human behind the customer. Last one is very important, it's crucial. Um, many of you work with frontline staff, of course, salespeople, service people. To really have a great impact, make sure that your 
frontline staff is empowered to take decisions on their own in favor of the customer. When something goes wrong, make sure that they don't say, oh, I will ask my boss how to solve this. No, make sure that they know that you expect them just to solve that and that you're not worried about the cost or the implications, but that you just want them to solve the problem. That's the key. Give them that freedom, give them that empowerment and support them in that process. And that will make a tremendous impact on the way how your customers perceive the culture in your organization. 12 guidelines that I think are crucial to create a fantastic customer experience in the years 2020 and beyond. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please uh, share it with your friends, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you again in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.